Okay, all right. Yes, welcome. Uh, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, is Lord. He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, and we have our being. Ah, and I greet you amidst amazing experiences of this life that God allows us to have and to embrace and to um, to go through. Um, <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the way that God does things. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think sometimes too, we get put in situations. So I, I recently was in a situation of both the cross section between a challenging, difficult situation, some apparent witchcraft involved in something like that too, tossed in the mix, and times of also prayer that have gone forward, you know, around something very specific. And getting to that point or to that place where it seems like you know you've been you've been defeated or you or things haven't worked out or and just that feeling inside you know and I, I think I, I think sometimes God allows us to get into those spots and into those places I think the Garden of Gethsemane is a good example of that because it's like you know just being brought to basically the very edge the very end the very because you know it's not it's not until you get to the end of yourself and to get to the end of your expectation and the end of your hope and that that's the spot where you see what God can do. You know, when whenever it's anything less than that, whenever it's anything less than that, you don't see what God can do. You know, you, you don't see what God can do when it's anything prior to that which is a miracle because anything prior to that is um, it's a possibility you can fix it you can do something about it you've got the resource the network the ability the the, the smarts but it's not until you're put in that situation where the only thing that you've got left is a prayer the only thing that you really ever had going in was a prayer and you've got to trust. And even when you get push, push past your point of trust, even then, you know, it's like, but you know that you prayed. And you know that you put it before God. And you still, you still trust Him in the midst of that because it's like, okay, I, I have prayed. I have put it forward. I did, I did bring it before the Father. And you know, I'm just going to trust His will, if nothing else. And you know when you're in the when you're in the press, I don't. Uh, there's there's no other way to experience certain things than being in it. Period. There's just there just isn't. You're not gonna know, and you're not gonna experience, and you're not gonna understand. And this is something that's amazing about the contrary nature of our humanity. We as human beings look for comfort. We look for security. We look for everything to be right, everything to be spelled out. Um, no challenge and no adventure. No, we want everything predictable. You know that is the uh, <clears throat> the machine system of the world is everything predictable. You know, I mean, what algorithms work on on predictions? You know, they want to uh, to make a loop, make something work. They got to get enough data together to then be able to say here's what this is going to do or going to be or here's how you predict and then make a decision based on the information leading up into this it's all about prediction but you know that's that's the almost the fallen human default to try to get some control back over the situation that is otherwise uncontrollable Whereas what God does, is He said, just trust me. Just flow with me. Just walk with me. Just believe. Just know that, you know, even when you're at the end, 
when you're past the wire, not down to the wire, but you're past the wire. And even when you get to that spot of being past the wire, you know, you know that no matter what happens, he's still there. You know, I think sometimes just being able to trust God through what seems to be a defeat is a massive, massive, massive lesson in and of itself. And, um, you know, recent situations for myself, I saw God take something that would have been seemingly, uh, you know, a defeat and just turn something around in a, just in that, that moment. You know, with that small prayer and just intervene and just put a couple things in place where it's it's not human hands. To and for and for a purpose of an outcome that he wants and also letting me see, letting you see, letting us understand his power and his control over the situation and to build our trust in him. You know, it's gotta be We've got to have some experiences with God in our... I mean, faith... Okay, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? Right, okay, so we go through some things, but also your faith is built because you've been through some stuff. You know, it's not just this um, blind faith, because Jesus came that they might... that to give recovery of sight for the blind. So he wants you to have an open-eyed faith. Not blind faith, but open-eyed faith where you see, you know, you've seen, you know the one that you've believed in and you've persuaded that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that you can ask or think. You, you see and you know and you believe and you understand. And with that, you, you believe and you trust and you go forward. Now God wants you to have that kind of life and that kind of experience and not the thing where it's just like, okay, I'm going to believe as long as I can understand it, and I'm going to believe as long as I can predict it, and I'm going to believe as long as it sounds reasonable to me. <clears throat> no, God wants you to believe when it's impossible, but you still got that little bit of belief somewhere inside of you, that little bit of hope. And I, I don't think you, you can really see who you are and what's really going on and where you're at in your relationship with the Father or anything like that without the challenge. You know, without the experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, had that. And had that in sufficient of enough of a way to see and to know and to understand that God is in control even when it comes down to literally the last minute. He's in control. You know, I think so often we we doubt because we look at the circumstances. But listen, it's not over until it's over, all right? It is not over until it is over. You know, too often we give up and we give in before it's over. Because the enemy sets up everything and then we get we have a few defeats, a few a few seeming defeats, I should say. A few things that just don't quite go right, don't quite go your way, don't quite fall into the line of what it is that you believe and know that God's been planning and purposing for your life. And based on that, you sum up the entire experience. You sum up your entire life. You sum up your entire um, human endeavor. But it's not over until it's over. You, and, and even when you think it's over, it's not over. I'll say that one again. Even when you think it's over, it's not over. How will you rise up in the midst of the challenge? Yeah, you know, I think I think probably the bigger lesson for me is just having that underlying bedrock trust that God is going to that just in, in who God is in who we are with him I, 
I think that's just it needs to be there you want it to be there I want it to be there and when you get put into the press that's the time that you find out is it there or not and if it's not there then be honest with God about it and if it is there well praise God because God's built that into you and he's going to use that now here's the other thing too why would you need that if God wasn't going to use that why would you need faith if God wasn't going to test and use your faith? You know, I mean, what? You know, you don't need a four x four if you're just going to do pavement driving. You may like a four x four as a toy, but you don't need one. But you need a four x four if you're going to be off road. You need a four x four if you're going to be in those kind of conditions because. A regular car just doesn't cut it. It's not going to work. So, now you need faith if you're going to be allowing God to take your life and use it and put you in situations and challenges where that faith is going to be tested and required to make it to the other side. So why do you want what you don't need? And why do you want things that you're not going to use? Why do you need wisdom? Because the scriptures say, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously without finding fault. But why do you need wisdom if you're not going to use it? If you're not going to apply the lessons that it teaches you? What good is it? What good does it serve you? If you have wisdom, what good does it serve you to have wisdom, to ask God for wisdom, if you're not going to use what he teaches you? I think I think there's a lot of things, a lot of spiritual gifts, a lot of um, natural pursuits, a lot of things that people just accumulate, and they don't even know why they have them. They don't even know what's what's it there for. Is it just a pass of time? What are you going to do with wisdom? What are you going to do with resources? You know, when God <clears throat> had the parable of the of the wise and foolish servants you know he gave to one you know he gave five to us five talents another one he gave two and another one one based on their ability now, he didn't give the guy that got that got the two he didn't give him five you know, he gave him two because that's what he was capable of working with. That's the size of what vision that he was able to move forward with on behalf of the master. You know, he'll give you, he gave to each person according to their ability. And the one that he gave the one to, he knew that that guy's ability was limited. So he already knew that. But he gave him something he could work with. Now, what did he do with that resource that was put in his hand? Well, in the end, he buried it in the ground. But he could have surely done something with it. But he buried it in the ground. Sat on it. When the master came back, he dug it up out of the ground and gave it back to him. Here you go. It's what you gave me. Now you got it back. I mean, he even used the very ground that could have grown piece of corn and took it up and, and misplaced the resource even there. God called him a wicked and lazy servant. But, you know, what are you going to do with resources? Why, why do you want them? What are you going to do with them? Now, this isn't the part of the talk where I pull that church hustle on you. <laughs> you know what that one is. Where it's like, okay, so now you got to go and put it in the kingdom. And this is the kingdom. You know, this this show. What? No, 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 no. This, this institution. No, listen. All you do with the resources God gives you 
is what he tells you to do with the resources God gives you. You give wherever he tells you to give. You do with it whatever it is that he tells you to do with it. I think so often people give as a means of appeasing their conscience, as a means of buying off um, and relieving themselves the nagging feel of, feeling of what they should actually tangibly do with their skills and talents and abilities and resources that are in their care. So they give something financially just so they don't have to think about it anymore. What does God want? God wants you to put it to work. <laughs> you know, if God's given you a gift and an ability with business, go build a business. Let him direct you what, what it is and do it because it's great when people are out there and engaged in fields and doing things that God gives them as a skill and a quickening to. You know, if God's given you a gift for medicine, go for it. Learn and be, a, be an amazing doctor. Be an ethical doctor. You know, be somebody that's in the, in the practice of healing and takes incredible joy in healing and serve the great physician in your practice. Learn from him. He'll give you a sensitivity to be able to diagnose and to do things that you'll never get from a textbook. But God gives to each as according to their ability. And he wants us, <laughs> you know, this is the other thing too, where when people say, oh, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And they, use, they often use that in terms of, uh, you know, troubles and trials. But scripturally too, God didn't give people more than they could handle on the positive side of things too. Because how many people, if he gave them a five, if he gave them five talents and they couldn't use the one, well, if he gave them five, the guy would have buried five in the ground, would have sat on five talents. So, yeah, you know, you don't want to be the one that's sitting on what God intended to be put to work, what God intended to use. You don't want to be that guy. That guy's called a wicked and lazy servant. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be wicked, and you don't want to be lazy. You want to be... You want to be righteous. You want to be awesome. You want to be... You want to walk with the living God in good relationship with Him. And you want to be diligent, hardworking. Why? Because it, it is His own reward. But the key is... Um, you want to be engaged where the Spirit quickens you. When you're engaged where the Spirit quickens you, work is not work. You will... Because when you're engaged where the Spirit quickens you, you enjoy the experience. There's a joy in the experience. And um, and you, you don't you don't feel like you're working. You just... You're, you're doing something because God's got you doing it. And it's fun. It's exciting. It's, it's challenging. It's engaging. You know, God wants His people to enjoy their experience. <clears throat> you know, work can be work can be challenging and it can be um, it can be hard at times. But if you're doing it as the kingdom has for you to do, as, as the king is leading you, you're going to come out of the other side of work having created things that are part of life and life giving. And you're gonna get to the other side and you're going to be fulfilled in what you do. See, the worlders, they don't have any fulfillment to offer. So what they give you is a paycheck on a system everybody's got to believe in in order for it to function and work in the first place. They give you a paycheck and then you go use that to drug yourself, to anesthetize yourself so that you don't feel the lack and the anguish and the pain for being a sellout in the first place. I think that's something that the worlders always struggle with is just the possibility of a little bit of time to actually stop and think about what they've actually done. Yeah, that's something they always want to avoid. But, you know, God is quickening His people to be on a different level with all of what life is and all the experiences of what life are. You know, God wants His people to be part of the solution. He wants you to put the resources that He's put in your care into, you know, to work. To, um, to engage. 
to be stretched, to challenge yourself, to um, to look at at um, at the things that are going on around you, and then to let God break your heart with those things, and then to begin to put what He's put in you into work to be part of that solution. Because for this reason, Christ Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. God wants to use you to destroy the works of the devil. God wants to use you and, and allow for the abundant life that he intended to flow through you by just you flowing with him and being in step and in, in alignment with him. As you do that, you're going to experience the just amazing power of God working on your behalf. So... You know, you want to be in God's grace. You want to be in God's purpose. You want to be in the center of His will. And we know that those of you that seek Him, you find Him. Those that ask, um, they receive. Those that seek, they find. Those that knock, the door is open. And with that, we love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithfix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you. We always love it when you guys say hi. Um, drop us an email, say hi, and... We'll catch up with you again sometime really soon. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.